Hello, Shui here. I'm a carpenter in Japan. Today, I'm building a walk-in closet in this space. This time, I'm building a walk-in closet. I'll install it in a small space, just like I made a study the last time. In the closet, L-shaped shelf boards will be installed at head height. Under it will be an L-shaped pipe clothes rack. The ceiling will be plastered, and 12mm cedar boards without knots will be used for the wall. Since the wall board is cedar, the shelf is also 30mm laminated cedar. I cut the shelf boards to the correct length. The top shelf width is 400mm, and the pipe close rack will be installed 300mm from the wall. I think that is the best position. I've installed 600mm wide laminated wood as a shelf before, but it's 600mm wide at head height, so making it difficult to find and dig close. So the best shelf size is 400mm wide. Since I'm cutting on site, I plane the side with an electric planer and finish it with a hand plane. These shelf boards will be installed in an L shape, the same as the shelf and the desk I installed in the study. I apologize for the word overlap, but I'm joining them in the same way. I firmly insert the joint bar at the corner joint. I plane the end accurately at right angle. To plane at a right angle with the hand plane, I set the board underneath, parallel to the shelf board as a support. Then, I set the planer on the desk and just pull it. As the hand plane is square, it can easily plane at a right angle. When cutting a groove on the shelf board, I set the guide ruler on the side and cut. If it's bottom, set it at the bottom, then cut it. The joint bar will be 10mm wide. As this joint bar is the only joint on the corner, I make sure that it fits tightly. I install the sideboard after installing the furring strips. I look like I'm moving around as I work, but the furring strips are installed first, followed by the sideboard, then the shelf boards. Now, I cut the sideboard. I've cut the top and bottom at right angles, but it doesn't fit perfectly. The floor was warped upwards slightly, so I need to plane it several times while adjusting. I'm installing the sideboard on the frame surface, so it will be hitting only the thickness of one board. I use a thin screw and secure it in the back, so it won't be noticeable. I screw it into the pilot hole that I made on the floor. Then, I fill it using glue mixed with sawdust. It's called Bokuso in Japanese. I apply it like a board shape. I can flatten it with a chisel or a spatula and finish it in one go, but it will dent when it dries. So apply it proud of the surface and wait until it dries. Then chisel off or sand it with sandpaper to make it flat. I measure the actual length of the shelf boards from the sideboard. I don't use a miter saw when cutting white boards like this. I use a circular saw with a guide ruler. In this way, I can cut it neatly instead of cutting twice with a miter saw. It's impossible to insert the joint bar from the back after installing the shelf this time. 
as another closet at the back is already built. There's a wall. So I set the joint bar on the side and join it to the other shelf board's groove. Now, I install the shelf. It will be installed above furring strips. Because all three sides won't be on it, I use a tension rod to hold it up. Then I secure it. I've measured the sideboard height and drilled pilot holes for a plug. I screw 90mm screws to the pilot holes. I glue the joint bar on the short shelf board and join them firmly. Since the wall on the side is not finished yet, I set a tension rod from the side to apply the pressure. When joining the exposed materials, a simple but effective method is to use a tension rod to apply pressure to attach well. Now the shelf boards are installed, I fill the holes with the plug that I drilled in the beginning. As it's a round wooden plug made of Japanese cypress, the color doesn't match the dark color of cedar. I'm applying soy sauce. It smells good. Now the colors are all matched. <coughs> Next, I install the baseboards on the furring strips. The baseboard is also made of solid cedar. It's a mix of sapwood and hardwood. The baseboard will be installed on the bottom of the wallboard, so it protrudes from the wall. The baseboard materials are all 4 meters. I cut it so that when all four sides are installed, it appears as if a single piece of wood encloses the room. The corner of the baseboard will be a miter joint. A miter joint is the simplest one to use, since I can easily cut it in one go with a miter saw instead of using a circular saw. If I used the butt joint, I would need to work on the corner when installing the baseboards. Now, I install the baseboard. I secure the baseboard to the floor from the groove using screws. Since I'm securing it well from the top, there won't be a gap even if the floor shrinks and becomes thin when it dries. It'll fit well, at least the baseboard is dry. Now I measure and cut the cedar board for the walls. Of course, the wallboards will be installed vertically. I use 12mm boards with no knots. Even if it's a cedar board, it looks beautiful if there are no knots. These cedar boards will also be used in the Japanese spare room as a bedroom ceiling. Ideally, when using 20 to 30 bundles for a house, unpack all of them first, then choose the ones with nice colors for Japanese spare room and then the bedroom. So the ones with less desirable colors will be used to build a closet. But if I do this, the boards were warp in a month and a half to two months. It isn't easy to store for an extended period. So nowadays, I check and anticipate the color of each bundle's cut-in inside before opening the package. Now, I install the wallboard. I installed it vertically with glue and a tacker. The tacker width is 4mm by 25mm. Installing wallboards can be done relatively quickly.
There are two ways to install boards, vertically or horizontally. I can't say which is better, but installing the board vertically is easier, and I can just play. If you install the boards horizontally, you can install them on columns and studs, so you don't have to install frame strips. But you need to build a corner first while installing them horizontally, because tiny bugs can get in from the wall board's joint. So installing vertically is better for avoiding bugs and for air tightness. Trees are also naturally vertical, so it doesn't look uncomfortable. The direction of using top and bottom is determined when installing vertically, as there are grain, hardwood, and root sides. When installing horizontally, you only need to make sure that the root side faces the right direction or the left. The top and bottom don't matter. They both have advantages and disadvantages. I think it's up to the carpenter to decide, according to the room's shape and how it'll be used. I cut the warboard and use it as a door frame. I install crown molding on the corner of the ceiling and the wall. I use the same solid cedar and surround it, securing it with glue and tagger. The board surrounding the top is called crown molding. And the board surrounding the floor is called baseboard. A baseboard prevents damage to the wall when vacuuming. Regarding the role of crown molding, it's tricky to paint the ceiling as a wallboard joint on the corner. Even wallpaper is tricky to install on the corner joint. That is why we install straight wood on the corner. I install a string under the shelf. It is about 1cm square of the same solid lumber. We call this kind of wood a string in Japanese. If it's on the room's corner, it's called a corner guard. A string should be installed at a place that is likely to create gaps in the future, so that the gaps will not widen and will be hidden. I install the three strings in the corners to hide the gap. Crown molding gives the room a stylish appearance by being installed around the materials. Now for the final piece of work, I install the pipe close rack. This pipe won't be installed on the wall. It is a type that hangs from the shelf board. I secure the socket on one side and measure the actual length. I install the pipe in an L shape, the same as the shelf boards. It's a stainless steel pipe, so I cut it with a grinder. I don't like the fire sparks, but I cut it. Then chamfers the corner with a grinder. This is called a grinder or a baby sander. I'm not sure of the official name. I installed the pipe 300mm from the wall as I mentioned earlier. Now, I've installed the walk-in closet. It's become a nice closet due to the luxurious cedar boards with no knots. That's all for today. Thanks for watching.